One type of calculation you will be asked to do uh, relating, relating to the chemical reaction uh, equation is a multiple uh, calculation. So for example, if I, if I say, mm, I want to make uh, 10 moles of your product, Fe2S3, how many moles of sulfur do I need? Okay, so how would you solve a problem like this? Okay, so again, the given is that you have 10 moles, uh, that you need this, right? So actually that's your given though, because then it says how many moles of this, so this is your needed uh, quantity. And this is your given, again. So you would start with saying that you have 10 moles of Fe2S3. And so we look to our chem balanced chemical equation to know the, the relationship between the moles of our product to the moles of sulfur. And in this chemical equation, there is a ratio of 1 to 3, right? So we say for every 1 mole of our product there, we have 3 moles of sulfur. Okay, again, moles of S Fe2S3 cancel out, giving you moles of sulfur. Right? So basically, 10 times 3 is 30 moles of sulfur. Okay, so, uh, multiple calculation is basically using the coefficients in the balanced chemical, in the balanced chemical equation. So let's do a checkpoint question now. Propane fuel, C3H8, is used in barbecues, how many moles of oxygen gas are needed to react with 1.6 moles of propane gas, given the equation below? Okay, so we know what is the relationship between propane gas and oxygen. We know that for every one mole of C3H8, how many moles of oxygen do you need? You need five moles of oxygen, right? So that's our equality, that's going to be our conversion factor. We are given that we have 1.6 moles of propane gas, so we just need this conversion factor to tell us how many moles of oxygen we get. Again, this would be one mole of propane gas to five moles of oxygen. Doing our unit analysis tells us we are going in the right direction. So 1.6 times 5 would give you 8.0 moles of oxygen. Answer C. So multiple calculations are great but often they're not very useful in the laboratory, right? So for example, we, even if we know how many moles we need, we can't really measure moles. What we can measure is mass of something. So we need often to calculate mass to mass conversion. So for example, let's say I have this uh, uh, chemical reaction I need to consider. Nitrogen reacting with hydrogen giving me ammonia. And I am given that I have 32 grams of this. If I start out with 32 grams of this, how many grams of ammonia will I make? This, equa this chemical equation doesn't mean that for every one gram of nitrogen, I get two grams of, of, of uh, ammonia. That's not the ratio. Right? The, mo the ratio is actually moles to moles of something. So if I start with grams, I can't just use this chemical equation as is. And I first have to relate it into moles first. Okay, so the first step, if, if you're given grams of something, let's say a gram of A, whatever that what something is, you have to first convert it into moles of A. Okay? Once you have moles of A, then you can relate that to moles of B. Okay, how do you relate moles of A to moles of B? You can, you can convert moles of A to become moles of B using the balanced chemical equation, right? So using the coefficients here. 
are using coefficients. Once you have the moles of B, the last step is to convert that into grams of B. Okay? So how do we do that? Let's fill in this gap here and this gap here. How would you convert grams of A to moles of A? Using what? What quality, what number we know converts between grams and moles? The molar mass, right? But particularly, the molar mass of A. Okay, what about this one? What converts between moles of B to grams of B? The molar mass of B. Okay, so take, so every time if you use this kind of sequence, I call it the grams to moles to moles to gram mantra, you, uh, it will guide you uh, in the right direction. So let's solve this problem. If I, again the problem states, if I have 32 grams of nitrogen, how many ammonium, how many ammonia will I create? Okay, so if I start with 32 grams of nitrogen, grams of A, I have to go to moles of A, into moles of nitrogen. Again, we need the molar mass of N2. So the molar mass of N2, let's see, let's do this on the side. Nitrogen is 14.01 grams per mole, and there's two of that. So times that by two, that's 28.02 grams, right? So, and that's per mole. Okay, so that means it's 28.02 grams of nitrogen is in one mole of nitrogen. Again, that's why we learn about unit analysis. It's going to really guide us. Grams, grams of nitrogen will go away. Next, we keep on going. We are done with this step. Let's go to this step. To go to moles of A to, to become moles of D using the coefficient. So I asked myself, what is the relationship between nitrogen and ammonia? One to two. Right? So one mole of nitrogen will give me two moles of ammonia. So check out that. And also knowing that units are canceling out. Lastly, now we know what, how many moles we have of ammonia, but that isn't, uh, is it the question? The question is how many grams of ammonia. So we need to relate that by using the molar mass of ammonia. So we have, let's do a molar mass of ammonia. Again, nitrogen is 14.01. Hydrogen is 101. Roughly, I'm rounding to the hundreds. There's three of that, times that by three, that's 3.03, .03, right? So adding the, these two numbers, you get 17.04 grams per mole. Okay, so for every one mole of ammonia, you get 17.04 grams of ammonia. Okay, moles and moles cancel. The last unit here is grams of ammonia. Again, that's unit analysis telling us we are on the right direction. So then you just go to your calculator, punch in 32 times 2 times 17.04, divide that by 28.02. And so I get 20. 38.9. Let's just double check that. 32 times 2 times 17.04 divided by 28.02. Yes. And there's only two sig figs here, right? One, two sig figs. Um, there's one, two, three, four sig figs here. There's no sig figs here. There's four sig figs there. So, answer is two sig figs. So, this should become. 39 grams of ammonia. So let's do some uh, questions to uh, check your understanding. Check.
Okay, so our first checkpoint question here is asked, how many grams of magnesium are needed to react with 16 grams of oxygen gas based on the following reaction? Okay, so again, we are asked, how many grams of this guy if we are given 16 grams? Right, so grams to grams, then you automatically go to your mantra of grams to moles to moles to grams. Okay, so we start out with grams of oxygen, 16 grams of oxygen. First step, grams of A to moles of A using molar mass. What's the molar mass of oxygen? I've already calculated over there. The molar mass of oxygen is 32.00 grams of oxygen for every one mole of oxygen. Okay. Uh, unit analysis says grams oxygen goes away. Check out that box. Now we have moles of oxygen. We need to go then to moles of B. In this case, moles of magnesium. Okay, so using our coefficient is a relationship between 2 to 1. So for every 1 mole of oxygen, we get, we need 2 moles of magnesium. Okay, so moles of oxygen, moles of oxygen goes away, telling us that we have done that step successfully. Lastly, we need to go to grams of magnesium, so moles of B to grams of B using the molar mass of B, or in this case the molar mass of magnesium, which is 24. Oops, you can't put 24 down there because it can't count that with a small, right? It's the one mole of magnesium is 24.31 grams of magnesium. Again, moles magnesium cancel out, giving us grams. We did that step successfully. Putting this into our calculator, we should get 16 times 2 times 24 0.31 divided by 32.00 is 24.31. In this case, we have only two sig figs, so it comes out to only 16 grams, 24 grams of magnesium. Answer then would be D.